Good morning, everyone. My name is Timothy Lee Grant, and today I wanted to do a video about electrical engineering and all of the different subcategories which can be found in this field because it is an extremely, extremely broad field, and that can be a advantage and also a disadvantage. So one of the reasons why you might be a little bit worried about it is because there are so many different subfields within it if you are planning to stop at your bachelor's degree, you might feel like you don't have a comprehensive or an in-depth knowledge of any of the particular subjects which you're going to learn. And so it might be a little bit difficult for you to be able to actually feel like you can apply what you've learned because you've learned so much from so many different subfields. But if you are planning to go further, go towards your master's or your PhD, I think electrical engineering is a wonderful field because you're going to be able to see what you like. You're going to get a whole bunch of different subfields and be able to say, oh, this was interesting. Oh, I don't really like that. And then you're going to be able to go forward on those specific subfields, which you are interested in. But even if you are planning to stop at the bachelor level, you do get a overview of a lot of different ideas and when you get into the workforce you can start to target those specific areas which you found interesting and so electrical engineering is very broad and today i wanted to go over some of those different categories with you and talk about what they're about and give you a preliminary idea of this major so the base of electrical engineering is physics and mathematics. So you're going to be using a ton of math. It, an electrical engineering degree is essentially an applied mathematics degree. So you're going to be modeling almost everything you do with a mathematical models, but the object of those mathematical models is based in physics. So it is mathematics and physics combined. Now, you're going to start off with circuits. So it's going to be how you connect up a circuit diagram and you're going to be looking at voltage and current and the resistance. So this is what people always think of when they think of electrical engineering. This is the the thing that comes to their mind and they don't think that there's anything else to electrical engineering except this field. So you're going to be looking at, okay, if I have a battery here and it's connected in some different way, there's a, a resistor here and maybe a light bulb there, which has a resistance and how, how many, uh, how many amps is going to be going through this light bulb? Because I want to know how bright it's going to be, right? So that's what people normally think of when they think of electrical engineering. And then you make it a little bit more difficult. You say, okay, well, what if instead of this battery, what if it's alternating, right? If What if the current isn't just steady at like five volts or something like that, right? What if you don't have a steady voltage, you have a alternating uh, voltage or a current? Okay, well then now you're gonna have to come up with some new ideas because it doesn't really apply much anymore that there's just gonna be at one single point of time, this there's gonna be this voltage, right? And then you get even more complicated because you throw in these different mm, uh, devices called capacitors and inductors and they have very strange properties insofar as when or when current is applied to them, they charge up fast and uh, deplete pretty fast. So they're nonlinear is what it's called. So now you need some mathematics to actually go through and figure out, okay, well, how do these nonlinear uh, devices actually function? And so that's your introduction. And by the way, so how the, uh, how you actually deal with those uh, alternating current is called through a Laplace transform. So you take all of the little uh, devices and you say you put them in the S domain. That's going to become important because you actually see it in many, many, many other uh, related fields within electrical engineering is a Laplace transform. So you use a Laplace transform, you solve the, the circuit and say, okay, well, uh, here's my equations which I got. And then you can do a inverse Laplace transform 
get it back in the time domain and you have solved your uh, problem. So then once you get that done, those are that's just like your basics. And by the way, I did want to mention how much I actually do circuitry. None. <laughs> so people think that that is what electrical engineering is, right? That you're going to be working with circuits all the time and that's all you're going to be doing. I have not touched a circuit since freshman year. Okay, I took my freshman year of uh, uh, circuit fundamentals, right? It's three classes, so it's a full year. After that, I have not touched circuits at all. At all. Okay, so, and this is school specific. I know. Uh, I talked with my friends from uh, Portland State University and Oregon Institute of Technology, and both of them told me that they touch circuits a lot. They do a lot with circuits, but at Oregon State University, nope. I did my basics, and then I never touched it again. So it, it does depend on which school you're going to, but I don't think that you're going to learn as much circuit analysis as you think you're going to learn going into it. So once you're done with that, then you're going to be starting your actual like electrical engineering classes. So you're going to have stuff like transmission lines and signal analysis. So signal analysis is actually a huge domain within electrical engineering. So what signal analysis is dealing with is how do you take in signals and process them? And this is a very complicated field because if you think about the real world, it is analog. So what that means is it's not zero and one, it's not a fixed amount, it's over time it has, uh, uh, for example, when I'm talking right now, the pressure which my voice is creating is oscillating at a specific frequency each like snippet of time, right? Well, how is a computer supposed to capture that? Okay, well that's how, that's what you're gonna be learning in your signal analysis class. And it has, as I said, oscillations. Ah, there we go. That's that's what I was talking about with the oscillating voltages, right? It's the exact same mathematics. So what you're going to be doing is a lot of Laplace transforms. And you're going to be trying to figure out like, okay, well, I don't really care about if it's really high frequency. Well, then you don't have to sample it at the, the it's called the Nyquist sampling rate. You don't need to sample it too fast if you're not interested in those really high frequencies. So you're going to be learning like, how do I actually take all of this, uh, all of these oscillating phenomenon, right? And how do I bring it into the digital world? Okay, so whatever it, whatever physical property it is, right? Um, if temperature measurements or whatever. How do I take that, bring it into the digital world, and then I can manipulate it in the digital world. Computers are very good at that. And then how do I get it back into the analog world, right? So this is how signals is. And as I said, this is a huge, huge subfield because a lot of phenomenon has waves to it. Particles are waves. As I mentioned, my voice, the... Um, the air pressure for a given note, right, ah, uh, is a is a wave. Um, light is a wave. Electric or uh, AC current, right? I mentioned that. That's a wave as well. So all of these physical properties are waves, and if you have a very good understanding of how to do processing of it, you're able to mathematically model those waves. So that's what you're doing. You're taking a physical phenomenon and applying a mathematical model to that phenomenon. And if you want to go into physics, okay, if you go into electrical engineering and then decide, you know, I really like physics, you, you would be able to do that because a lot of physics has to deal with uh, signal analysis. So that's one. 
Another subfield is going to be more of like the electronics. So what I mean by electronics is how the physical properties of materials and how electricity flows through semiconductors and how you are able to create transistors and how to make the transistors smaller and all of the properties which uh, are associated with those electrical devices. So I mentioned capacitors, inductors, and so the actual creation of it. Uh, I don't know too much about that because I've actually never taken a class. Most of those subfields or that uh, subfield is going to be in your electives uh, time and I didn't do that track in my electives. So I don't know much about um, electric devices. Let's see, so uh, what else is there? There is going to be a lot of computer science. So I have a minor in computer science and you are going to be taking like programming, data structures, I took algorithms, I took machine learning, I took uh, operating systems uh, one and two so assembly language so you're going to be learning a whole bunch of both the theoretical computer science like data structures and discrete math linear algebra algorithms right all of those like theoretical and then also the application of it so you're going to be learning how a operating system takes the hardware devices on your computer and how it actually uses that to present an application which is what you interact with as a user on a computer how does that work how does the the how do you as a user abstract all that away and so that you're able to actually just use the computer as you want to right and by the way this is what i kind of specialized in so I took a whole bunch of electives which re or which uh, pertained to computer science. So that's what I uh, was interested in and that's what I specialized in. Um, then you also have hardware. Um, so how that's more of the circuit analysis, circuit design. So how are you going to create a PCB, which is like a, 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 a like board kind of with circuits in it and you're going to have resistors on it capacitors all of that and um that's that's another track that you're able to go in the yeah hardware and circuits um robotics as well um and uh, it's very interesting that as i mentioned like a lot of these subfields are very fluid between each other as so far as um, the circuit analysis is going to be able to you're able to use it like in robotics um, and but you're also going to have to know more of like the mechanical engineering side of things so if you want to go into robotics you do need to know like multiple different domains I think robotics is the most like interdisciplinary domain of electrical engineering you need to know uh like strength of materials and like statics right not statistics but statics like you need to know dynamics you need to know control systems and by the way control systems like these techniques which you use in circuit or not circuit analysis um signal analysis there we go what I was talking about, a Laplace transform, it shows up everywhere. Even places that are not necessarily connected to waves show up. In control systems, you have to use uh, Laplace transforms and Fourier transforms to model uh, how a system is going to react when there's multiple different uh, devices and inputs um, acting upon a system at the same time so robotics is definitely the most interdisciplinary between all of them because you're going to have to have a very wide 
uh, array of knowledge. You need to know, uh, as I mentioned, control systems, physics, and uh, all of the mechanical engineering stuff. You need to know the electrical engineering stuff of circuit analysis and actually like how the electricity is going to be uh, like the the power which it is going to uh, generate and what's going to happen with in the motors and stuff like that then you need to know computer science the theoretical is more like the artificial intelligence and how like what it's going to do and then also the uh, more practical is going to be the operating systems the assembly and more of like the computer engineer right so the I did I should probably make that a slight distinction as well so you're going to have the theoretical like computer science and then more of the computer engineer computer science as I mentioned is like algorithms uh, the let's see what else would machine learning all of the like theoretical like ideas uh, behind how computation works is going to be more of the theoretical computer science whereas computer engineer is going to be okay well how is the hardware actually interacting with the software what's going on with inside this register it's much more practical much more like uh, uh, applicable I guess you could you could call it um, so that's robotics the other big one is uh, power engineering right so you're going to be learning high voltage and high current and so how that's transmission lines right so how, how do you actually send that power over long distances and how do you generate the power safely how do you uh, take a hydroelectric dam that uh, has turbines spinning and how do you generate power from that? How do you uh, store that power? Because power will dissipate over time. So how do you store it effectively? How do you uh, transport it? How do you use it at the end user, right? So all of that is going to be power engineering. You can also get into more of like the electric vehicle side of things. So like motors and um, that would also have some correlation with the uh, power um, and um, let's see, did I? I think I, I think I hit everything. I guess you. The, there's also like niche ones, like uh, solar. I know one of the electives is like uh, uh, trying to increase the efficiency of solar, and so you're gonna have all of those niche ones as well. So, yeah, electrical engineering extremely broad subject uh, if you want a degree which allows you to look at a wide 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 range of different subfields i would say go for electrical engineering figure out what you like and then specialize in that because it's a really good degree in that regard and um yeah so it's very difficult a lot of math a lot of physics um but just push through keep going don't give up don't don't give up right like i'm not that smart right it, it, you don't have to be extremely smart you just need to not give up right like that that's why i was able to make it is essentially like i just kept going i kept going i kept going even when i thought that i was going to fail a class i just like no i'm going to i'm going to push through i'm gonna, not going to lose hope just keep going anyways eventually you'll make it um, and yeah, thank you guys for watching this video. I hope that you had a wonderful day. Uh, my name is Timothy Lee Grant, and I will see you guys soon. All right, bye.